to the nightcap. It's your girl, Carolina Sanchez, and wedding week continues. I mean, getting ready for the big day is one of the best things we go through, right? No, it's actually quite hellish planning for a wedding. There is so much stress and drama, and let's not talk about the money, honey. It is tough, but I will be trying some cake later on, so you better stick around for that. Plus, we have a musical performance that you gotta stick around for. But first, I gotta head over to the couch because my guests are here and ready to talk about all the dramas and all the good things around wedding planning. Let's get into it. Yeah, what's up for a nightcap? Chill, you know, kick back. All right, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly around wedding planning. We've got a professional, an expert here. We've got Kaylin Beck behind Hi. Beck and Call, which is a, an events and wedding planning company, right? Yes. Thanks for being here. I can't wait to dive into your expertise. We've got our friend Cindy Burbano, yes. who is engaged, so yes. she's in the middle of planning. Girl. Hello, hello. <laughs> and she's planned some weddings before. <laughs> and we've got D. Gotti. You've been married for a minute, so you remember the wedding planning, Most and you are definitely. the male representative here. <laughs> so be ready. I'm ready. All well. right, before we get, jump into it, I'm actually going to show you guys a TikTok video that talks about the realities around wedding planning. So we'll start it off with that. Let's check it out. Woo! I feel like the list goes on. I don't even think I read them all. That was a lot. Does this sound familiar? Yes. Very. Yes. What is the biggest stress when it comes to wedding planning? From what I have experienced, it's the budget. I think a lot mm. of people don't realize how much things cost until they see, you know, real flowers are very expensive. Yeah. Uh, and then when you have to pay for food for 100 people plus, you know, liquor, it all adds up. And I don't think people realize that that is a big expense. Absolutely. I mean, what do you remember, Cindy? I mean, as far as like, I married in my 20s, I was young, I wanted the big dress, the overly priced dress, the best flowers, the this, the that. Mind you, in, in the Latino culture, our dad, for the women, the dad usually pays for the wedding. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even know a budget. I was good, <laughs> I was this, I was that, I was throwing. Now that I'm engaged, many, five years later, um, <laughs> many years later, no, I realized really, really there is a budget. You see what things cost. You start thinking, well, do you really need this? I mean, do you really need that symphony, whatever, you know, performer? Mm -hmm. Do you need the fireworks? They're 5,000 extra dollars and stuff like that. It all adds up. So I'm, I think now I'm taking more the budget into consideration, like you said. I got yeah. you. Okay, so D. Gotti, were you a groomzilla? No. <laughs> what was wedding planning like for you? I just told. Oh, I just he's grabbing the drink. Oh, yes, okay. Yes. I just was told happy wife, happy life. You know, so uh, I just sidestep all that trouble and get out the way. Mm -hmm. Pay for what I need to pay for. Did you write those checks? Most definitely. Oh, okay, yes. but were you surprised by the by the receipts that were coming in? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we we went small the first time. Mm -hmm. Had a nice reception and just, you know, went small. So it wasn't too bad. Okay, what do you mean by first I, time? I was going to say. How many times I mean, did we, you get no, married? No, no, no. We're going to get married again and go be. We're going to redo our, our vows. Our vows, yeah. And do it bigger. Do I really bigger. think that that's how we should be approaching weddings. Most I think definitely. you should have something small to start. And then once you hit those milestones, the 10, the 20, the 30, yeah. that's when you celebrate like, holy like, mm -hmm. our union is so strong, we done made it decades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, th we don't do that, but that's what we should do. Yeah. And people don't understand it's a business. When you marry somebody, it's a business. Mm -hmm. So you, mm. you start where you start at, and you, you grow into what you're going to grow into. And, and it's time to do it big. Man, when it comes to the money, though, like, when I look back at how much I spent on my wedding, I'm like, man, that should have been a down payment on a house. On the house. Well, it yes. could have been a paid off car. Like, yeah. there's so many things yeah. that money could have gone toward. Now, I loved my wedding. It was amazing. It was a great day, but mm, that money could have gone so somewhere else. Just imagine how much it is now. Because every year, it's like, it increases what, with vendor fees and inflation. Okay. So I have a question <laughs> for you. I have a question for you. Yes, because mm -hmm. I am planning. So what are we looking for as far as a budget or like, what, what's the number for, let's say, 100 people at a wedding? Like a nice yeah. wedding. What are so we spending? It's always Ooh. best to start with, again, how many people? Like 100, let's yeah, say. Yeah, so right. 100. Also, you want to include 
how well fed you want to feed these people. Yeah, so is it a $7 it plate like a, or a $15 yeah. plate? So it, it really depends and it varies oh. because um, that with 100 people, you have to consider you need a venue to accommodate 100 people. Okay. On All I'm seeing is chit-chat. Yeah, yeah chit-chat. So then really, you need the, the arrangements. Yes, you need the flowers. Then you need you the open bars. Yes. Because, you know, mm -hmm. the Latinos, we, we mm -hmm. can we can mm -hmm. drink. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't do open bar. I got married in my 20s. We didn't do open bar. Uh, we had two liquor runs in the middle of our wedding happen. Oh, wow. And okay. then the venue was like, uh, the venue finally stopped my people and were like, where are you going getting mm -hmm. these bottles? Do y'all have a TABC license? Yeah. <laughs> yes. We were All sneaking them in. I'm so important. sorry. I, yes. I will repent. All right. Well, we've been talking about the money, but uh, we need to talk about the guest list because mm. I feel like there's a lot of drama with that. So you stay right there because coming up next, we're going to get into the family political drama when it comes to planning who's invited and who ain't. We'll be right back. No one tells you how political weddings can really be. I still have people that are still mad at me till this day because they didn't get a wedding invite. Although this might be a tad bit controversial, this is what you needed to do to make the invite list to my wedding. Why would you want to come to my wedding if you do not know my husband? If you don't know my husband, you don't know me. Therefore, you're not coming to my wedding. If we have not talked in one year, you're not coming to my wedding because you don't even know if I'm alive. Like if I use the word should, as a gay man, this was huge for me. If I had any inkling that you were homophobic at all, if you've ever made a questionable Facebook post, anything, that is the sure enough way to not be on that invite list. Mm, okay, welcome back to the Nightcap. I'm with my friends Kaylin Beck, Cindy Burbano, and Dee Gotti. We've been talking about wedding planning, and this is all around the guest list, which there is so much drama around. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's one of the hardest things to navigate, is who to and who not to invite, because you're gonna piss somebody, somebody off. off. That's the thing, it's like you start off and you're like, oh this, oh my gosh, and my friend here, and this and that, next thing you know, you got like 500 people, and you're mm -hmm. like, wait, I mean, I'm not gonna pay for all these mm -hmm. individuals, so let's start cutting out, well, do I really need to invite my friend from third grade? Right. I don't really talk to her, you know, <laughs> right. like, yeah. come on now, or, mm -hmm. or stuff like that, so you start doing, for me, I believe that the closer the people that are with the couple, those are the people that should be invited. Yeah, right. those are the ones who need to be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. And I, I look at weddings like almost not like a funeral. It's, it's supposed to be family. Mm. A wedding's like that's a, a funeral. Point. Yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a good point. It's, 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 a, it's a valid point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't I would never compare them, but you yeah. right. I mean, you know, that's supposed to be family. All that friends and, and close friends, I really don't. I'm an introvert, me and my wife, so we mm. kind of stay out the way. And it's crazy because I do music too, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah, like you're gonna be performing for us later, right? That's right. It's okay. I like the camera, but I like staying out the way as well. So it would probably be family on my guest list. So mm -hmm. yeah, who did you have? It was a very intimate uh, wedding the first intimate. time. It was. It was very intimate. Five, like I 10, said, we done court, we done the courthouse, oh, and then the we done a nice reception. Oh, mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah, because we we've been we've been together since we was 12 years old. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, wow. We met at 12. And wow. That long, I've been with this woman, been in love with this woman. You know, cheat on my wife. <laughs> I'm real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just intimate. It was us. That's and that's why your I rib. say we didn't build, and it's time to do it big. So this is gonna be the year. Our anniversary is November the I mean the 12th. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be our year. Uh, we're planning some big. So Beck, I'm gonna be yeah. getting, I'm gonna get <laughs> <laughs> All right, Beck. Do you have pointers for people at home? To both of their points, I do think that family. Um, should always come first if you're close to your family of course right, right. Um, that is the biggest thing that people don't realize is some people are inconsiderate so you can invite people and they won't show up yeah because, I have people who mm -hmm. were invited confirmed didn't, didn't show, show up, up and people who weren't invited that showed up and showed yeah, up right. so I was like okay we just yeah. whoever and wants it's, to come it's, up it's in hard here. to gauge that's why um, like a lot of my clients they do intimate gatherings intimate weddings so they kind of know who they're inviting and they know that they're going to show up. Yeah. All right, so Aris, obviously the, the budget, the guest list, anything else that was stressful before we talk about the good <laughs> Obviously you had a very, you had a fantastic. Smooth sailing because I just got out the way, basically. So is that your message to the fellas? Get out Get the way. Get out the way. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I think is stressful. I think maybe for women or for brides is the um, attire. 
Mm. So you want them to dress maybe a certain way or like if it's a very elegant dinner, mm -hmm. you want them to be like a black tie event, let's say, or something like that. Or somebody showing up with like a white dress and you're the bride because mm -hmm. it happens. Mm -hmm. it that really is a does. big faux pas. If like, don't you ever do that to a bride. That is her day. I don't care if you're the mother-in-law, you're kicked out. <laughs> like, you what don't you do that. All right. The best parts about wedding planning. The best parts, I would say working with the couples that are so excited uh, mm -hmm. to that point. Um, it can be stressful sometimes working with those couples that want to be all hands on and mm -hmm. don't want to release the management expertise to me. But uh, definitely that can also be the exciting part too. A lot of people now are wanting to plan their weddings along with the planner. So, you know, I have like guided wedding planning packages so people can work with me. They want to mm. choose the venue. They want to right. choose their flowers, their theme. Um, that's the happy part to seeing how happy people are planning it together, which will show, you know, in their relationship, uh, mm -hmm. will show in the future. Good. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Kaylin, you, you probably <laughs> yeah, are going to get hired by these two. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much. But for me, <laughs> one of the best Salud. parts is cake tasting. And coming up next, I take a girlfriend who's in the middle of wedding planning, wedding cake tasting. And D. Gotti's gonna be performing OG business. So you stay right there, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been talking about wedding planning and obviously all the stress that runs around it. But one of the best parts is trying cake. And I got to go to Lucy Pearls to get a taste of a few. Check it out. Pick what you like. We get a lot of brides that come in and they're concerned about what everyone at the party is going to like, but it's your day. It's your groom's day. It's your day. So pick the cake you want. All right, so I'm seated now and I got my girl Yessie, as I said. She's trying some wedding cakes. So we came to Post HDX where Lucy Pearls is in the building. I know you've seen it. That, that massive neon sign, it grabs your attention and you see the wedding cakes you can try but they also have other cakes. And I am here with the owner, Nicole Morris. Ma'am, I mean, I've seen the lines. Yeah. I've seen the tiered cakes. Obviously, you know a thing or two about cake. We do, we do. When it comes to wedding cakes, what makes them different than a regular cake you would bake on a Sunday? Well, we always give 100% focus on that cake. All the team does. Um, it's about love. Mm. So. I play Barry White when we make cake. Mm. Some of the kids play their modern music, but Barry White is my theme song in my marriage. Okay, okay. So we play Barry, sometimes a little Marvin Gaye, a little Teddy P. But there's always some, the, the love is in the air while we're baking. Mm. And that's important. Absolutely, because that's important. the energy they're that's the be energy. taking when that's they're right. taking the bites. That's right. All right, so when you're wedding cake shopping, what are you looking for? Um, I guess moisture. And something people are going to remember, like, oh my god, that cake at your wedding, best cake I've ever had. Mm, so memorable. Mm -hmm. Memorable is what I'm looking for. Because I love a good cake, and that chocolate cake, girl. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, we're diving in now. So, Nicole, what have you laid out in front of us? Okay, so we're going to start with a couple of our uh, number ones, and then I've got the Betty Lou, which is one of our signatures. Okay. The banana pudding cake. Oh, that's banana pudding. That's a banana pudding cake. I love bananas, but I don't like the texture of pudding, so I was like, make it a cake. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm diving in. So you dive can talk in. about it. And so this I'm is what put us on the map. When we started four years ago, we mm -hmm. started at farmer's markets. And so this became our popular item at the market, and then we brought it over to the store mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And so it checks the box of being the moist cake, the cake that people are gonna remember. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. All right, you were into the chocolate, so uh, yeah, let's give that chocolate. chocolate a shot. Okay, so this one is called the Brooklyn Blackout. Okay. And so it's made with cocoa and fudge, and then we drip chocolate ganache, and then we add more fudge because we weren't quite sure if it had enough chocolate. Okay. So it's very complex, so it's not overbearing. It pairs very well. Is it like a dark chocolate type of taste? No dark chocolate. It's, it's just... Ooh. It's, it's a complexity of different layers of chocolate, so it hits all of the taste buds. From the bittersweet to the really, the milk chocolate, it, it, it checks right. all those boxes. Now, it's the going really cool phases. Yeah. It is coating the mouth. Like you get flavor as soon as you bite into it, but then as you start munching, 
it just opens the up more. The richness is yeah. coming through. Oh, it's not overpowering. No, it's not no. too rich. It's not too sweet. It's just right. Okay, so this one is called the Betty Lou. So it is a sour cream coconut with pineapple filling. We named it the Betty Lou because it's named after my great aunt. She made this every Christmas. And the year that I decided that I wanted to get married, my aunt baked this cake while I talked to her about the guy who proposed. Hmm. And she gave me the story of the cake and marriage. She said, you have to make sure that you're bringing the flour and the sugar, because he's gonna bring the eggs and the butter. Oh and together God. you mix and you become one. Isn't that cool? That's cool. That's and she went on to say, the pineapples represent speed bumps in life. Pick somebody you were willing to slow down with and not kick them out of the car. And figure it out. And figure it out. To make it a delicious cake. She, it's a really good cake. So mm. this reminds me more of mm. a traditional wedding cake mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the coconut twist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now get this a little bit delicious. of pineapple. And we've played around with just how much pineapple. During the holidays, we put a little bit more because it it's really was a holiday cake when I was growing up. But everyday standard, it's just a little bit of a hint. So you could say it's almost like a pina colada in a cake. I like it better like this because anything oh. too, too pineapple forward, yeah, because it'll, it'll wipe out all the other yeah. flavors. This yeah. is really good. Isn't that awesome? I mean, Nicole, you so, sold me on the fact that when you're baking the wedding cake, you're listening to the Barry Whites, yes. the <laughs> Teddy Pendergrass. Like, that just tells you get the me. the vibes going. Yeah. And what I tasted here today tells me you know what you're doing, and this What's is that? worth it. Yes. All Every right. penny. Oh, I'm telling you that banana pudding. Mm. I mean, <laughs> listen, if you're planning, yes. it's one to check out. And if you like the chocolate, that's fully chocolate. All right, well, thank y'all so much for coming and chatting, but now it's time for music. So, D. Gotti, you got some OG business to handle? <laughs> All right. Well, you stay right there, because we're getting the performance coming up next. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We're done talking about wedding planning business. Now it's time for some OG business. Okay, we heard about all of your wedding uh, planning. Now it's time to get to who D. Gotti really is. Right, right, you are a musician, you're an artist. Yes. So what I, are you gonna do for us? I'm gonna perform my new single, OG Business. One of my new singles off my new album, OG Business. Self-titled, it's going down, man. The short film coming with the album. Oh, what, short film too? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so for people who don't know D. Gotti, who are yeah. you? Man, I'm an artist out the South that came up in the DJ screw era, rapping in screw house. Later on, I got to deal with Capitol Records. I mean, Rec Shop Records, then Capitol Records. Done a few movies, Dirty Third, One, Two, and Three. And I've just been getting back active, you know. I'm a, I know I'm a little older, so I'm going to do it for the OGs, but we bring a relevance. We just showing them we still alive. Hell yeah. We still active. We still here, and it's going down. You still handling your business. Most definitely. All right, D. Gotti, take it away. Let's get it. OG business, man. Honor to be here. Straight up. The night cap. Asking me what I've been doing. Man, I've been out here getting to it. Handling OG business. Handling my OG business. Asking me what I've been doing. Out here getting money getting to it. Taking care of OG business. My OG Nobody gave us none. We really paid our dues. That ain't even debatable. Real will stand on principle. Get you till we innocent. Moves better benefit. Pop out OG Chucks. Red play penitent. Drop the top on penitent. Suckers really finicky. Boy, sign similar. OG really him at that. Took risks, even made assists for the winning play. Now we book trips, stay out the way. Boys in my A. Working smarter, much less a playing game. Had to get my stuff in order like I'm trying to leave a stain. Man, that suckers just be borderline lame. Never did it for the fame. How we different if we the same? Stay up in my lane. Man, I've been out here getting to it. Handling OG business. Handling my OG business. Yeah, OG business. Handling my OG business. Yo, 
Pussy on hustle, yo, eat who told you touch the seat. Everybody can't go. This like a puzzle piece. Aviator Gucci's on. This ain't how I suck off. Ain't your top like where your goofy on. Let boys in the sewer deep. Put my soul into a song. Pressure, cool off in these games. Cops do us wrong. Speck usually. Baby told me focus, bunch of people. Bogus, I was her asses and over good gas, loving sofas. Project baby put the B up in front of the whip. Handle this OG business, then I'ma need me a silk. For we had paper, we was real, we told to be here. If you a OG, this your year, let them know we in here. Yeah, man, we here.